welcome to chapter 12, section 9, called Areas of Parallelograms and Triangles. <laughs> I got cut off there, I couldn't see the end. So just to get started here uh, on the front screen, the first thing you should see is your due date. I don't see that on the, my teacher preview, but you will see it on your student screen. The second thing is the number of attempts. We always have unlimited attempts um, on homework, tests, and quizzes. Number of questions just tells you how many are on this particular assignment. Grading policy is always best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is one you get to keep. And partial credit is enabled, so if you answer one of two questions correctly, you get credit for the one question, or however many you answered correctly. This also, if I understand correctly, goes into parts of a question too, if there's more than one answer within the question. There's partial on there too. Uh, down here it says, please remember once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. And what that means is once I click start, uh, down here in the bottom right corner, there's going to be a submit assignment button. This um, is how we finish an assignment. So what that means on the last screen is you can't work on anything because Alex is going to lock all of your other assignments and even the resources until you click the submit assignment button. What it's trying to do is leave this attempt open for you and not close it. If you, you know, say close this screen and you're not done yet, or you close your computer, it's trying to leave the attempt open for you. Uh, so just make sure that when you wanna leave this screen, whether or not you finished, you click submit assignment so that Alex doesn't lock out all of your other assignments and resources. That's one huge reason to click that button. Another big one is that it actually affects the gray book when you click that button so that um, your teacher can see what you've been working on and you know hopefully it will improve your grade there. Um, all right, on the side we always have three resources. We have example or explanation. Sorry, explanation tells us that um, we're going to lose our current question attempt because it's going to give us the answer to this exact problem. So it's not going to give you the answers unless you come type them in. Um, example will give you something very similar to what it is we're looking at and kind of walk you through the idea here. Read through background information, especially if you see this section. Um, if you don't see the background information, it's kind of introducing something brand new. That's the idea. Um, so you can scroll through. Once you're happy with that example, you can close it. You can open another example so that you can see um, another one worked through if you need to. Um, you can also message your teacher directly from the screen so we know where to come help you because it attaches a picture of this problem on the email. So it's a very a good way to get specific help on a problem. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, right. So in this one, it says find the area of this parallelogram. Be sure to include the correct unit in your answer. So once we've done our calculation, we need to make sure that we choose either centimeters, centimeters squared, or centimeters cubed. So remember, this has to do with the dimensions, basically, that you're looking at. Um, if you're looking at just a length, like the, the top here is 14 centimeters, the height of this parallelogram is 6 centimeters, this slanted or um, diagonal line here is 9 centimeters, those are one-dimensional, that's length. Um, Two-dimensional is when we're talking about area, which is what we're going to find. So it's when we usually multiply you know, two things together that have the same unit on it. Um, and to do this one, it's the same idea as doing a rectangle um, because a parallelogram is just a rectangle that we kind of pushed sideways like this a little bit. I know that's kind of a funny way to, to think about it, but we're basically just tilting a rectangle. Okay, we're, we're kind of pushing it over a little bit. So. To find the area of a rectangle, we say it's length times width, which we have length and width, or width and length. It really doesn't matter which one you label length or width. Um, for the, a parallelogram, instead of length and width, since it's usually kind of slanted like this, we say the area is base times height. So this is the base, and then the height is going to be a line drawn at a 90 degree angle. So it's usually somewhere in in the parallelogram and they have it kind of coming down from the other one so it's kind of in the middle and you'll see the little right square that shows you it's perpendicular. Um, all heights are perpendicular so when we do length times width this is base times height it's the same thing length and width it's just that the side is perpendicular to the bottom so we just don't need to, to make that distinction of length and height. 
Um, so for this one, we have height and we have base. So make sure that the height is perpendicular to the base. Um, that's definitely, we want to make sure we're not using the slanted ones on the side unless by chance they're showing us the, the height going this way. And you'll see the dotted line. That's kind of the clue that it's the height. All right. So I think that's enough explanation there. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to look for the base. Now they put the, the measurement on the top. Here's 14. Remember a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So if the top is 14, the bottom is 14. And then the height is 6. So we just want to multiply these two guys together. Let's see, we get 24. 6 times 4 gives me 24. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. So we get 84. Um, and so I have 84. And like we were talking about before, it's two things multiplied together. These both had centimeters on them. So we're looking at two dimensions, length and width. So this is centimeters squared. If we were looking at cubed, that means that we have a three-dimensional object, something like this. I'm not going to be very good at drawing this guy. Let's see. Something along those lines and then dotted line there. So it's like a three-dimensional object. That would be cubed. That's length, width, and depth. Um, so um, it's just the difference between the, the different dimensions there. A view of that idea. Uh, let me get a new one here. Okay. Um, so find the area of the triangle below. Be sure to include the unit, the correct unit in your answer. So if I have a triangle, just like we do there, so there's a triangle, um, and we have 20 feet for the, the base here, we have 7 feet for the height, and then we have 15 feet for the side here. Um, so we want to kind of go through the, the Y for this one um, as far as the equation. So we have a triangle, and the formula for the area is area equals 1 half base times height. The base is always the length that's perpendicular to the height. And the height is always this dotted line. I know I didn't do mine dotted, but, um, or dashed. So the base is this 20, and the height is the 7. They're giving you this 15 as extra to see if you know what to do with it. Basically, um, they're just giving you extra information there. We're not even going to use that 15. But if we want to know why is it 1 half base times height, if we go back really quick to the rectangle, we were just doing this. And we had length times width, like that. Well, instead of length, I'm going to call this base. This is the bottom, the base. And instead of width, I'm going to call this the height, like we're standing this rectangle up. So this is base times height. This is a very typical equation when we do base times height. Um, so if I, I convert these really quick just so that we can kind of talk about the triangle equation. And I'm going to do this dashed line like this from corner to corner. We're going to pretend like that's nice and straight. I know it's not. It's a little curved. But what we want to notice is that this line, when I go from corner to corner, or I could have gone from this corner to this corner, it cuts the triangle in half. Um, or not the triangle, sorry, the rectangle in half. It creates a triangle that cuts the rectangle in half. So that's quite literally where the half comes from. It's half of a rectangle. Um, if we finish this guy off, it would be a rectangle. This is the diagonal that connects those corners. Something like that. And I know that doesn't look very good, but um, a little closer. Something like that. So it's just half of the entire rectangle that we would see. That's the idea there. Um, so we're going to go 1 half, area equals 1 half times the base times the height, which is 7. Um, so you can do this two ways. You can multiply 20 and 7 and then divide by 2 because that's what one half times means I'm really dividing by two. Um, or you could reduce first. You could do one half times 20. One half of 20, so I'm dividing by two. Um, two divided by two is one. 20 divided by two is 10. So really one divided by one kind of cancels itself out. It, it goes away. Um, so it just kind of reduces away. So I have 10 times seven. So area equals 70. Or I could have done 20 times 7, and I would have 
gotten 140, and then I could have divided by 2, and I would have gotten 70. Either way, if you notice, I get 70. doesn't matter which method I use there if I multiply and then divide, or if I reduce and multiply. I think reducing and multiplying is a little easier because we tend to deal with smaller numbers that way. So it kind of just depends on preference there. Um, we want to make sure, since it's an area, area is two-dimensional. So I want to make sure that I grab my feet squared. All right. And again, we can think of that. Okay, so what is the area of the triangle? So remember to find the area of a triangle. It's one-half base times height. So we need to know what is the base and what is the height. So in this case, we have a horizontal line, which is really nice because it's super easy to take the um, measurement of a horizontal line. I'm just going to count and say there's we're starting at negative 6 over here, and we go to 5 here. So if I count all the way across here, that's 11 for my base. And then my height, so I'm at negative 3 here for my, my y. That's what where this line is. It's at negative 3, right? They're both at negative 3. And then for this point up here, because that's where I want my height to come from, I have to go up to 1. So I have to go from negative 3 to 0. That's 3. And then I have to go up one more. So that's a height of 4. So we're just kind of counting the lines here. And we have to picture that horizontal line, because we're counting from that vertex down, straight down, to this line. Um, and you can definitely take grid paper or any kind of online graphing um, and graph this if it helps to see the grid, um, the grid lines, you know, to help count that. Okay, one half equals a. So we're just going to multiply these together. Um, so we can do 11 times 44 and then divide by 2, or I could do 4 divided by 2, which would get me 2. 11 times 2 is 22. So that would have worked out the same if I said 11 times 4 is 44. 44 divided by 2 is 22. Either way, it's not a big deal if you kind of cross cancel first. So this is just 22 square units because we don't necessarily know what the units are. It's it's just a coordinate grid, so they're the squares. You know, if we had the grid on here, but we don't necessarily know how large the squares are, so we just call them square units. All right. So in this one, it's asking us to find the area of a right triangle and be sure to include the correct unit in your answer. So this one's kind of randomly thrown in here. We haven't been doing area for this whole section, but there's a reason they're throwing this guy in. We have a right triangle, and we need to find the area. So what is the area of a triangle? Well, it's 1 half base times height. When we're talking about a right triangle, the base and the height are the two legs that make the 90s. So we kind of flip this around a little bit. I have the base here, which is 6, and I have the hypotenuse, that's across from the 90 here, which is 10, but I don't have this missing piece. This would be my H. So I have my base. I know that's a 6, but I need my H. I need to know what am I multiplying that by to get my area. And that's going to be multiplied by 1 half. So I'm missing this piece. How can we find that missing piece? Well, what have we been doing for most of the section? Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go through really quick and go A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's a right triangle. I know they're equal. So I have h squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And really, a and b don't matter which one is a and b, but c does matter. c has to be across from the hypotenuse. Remember that. That's the big one. So h squared equals 36 plus 100, which is squared 6 and, a, and 10. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. I get h squared equals 36 minus 36 cancels. And we end up with, um, I think it's 64, I believe. I want to make sure I didn't do that wrong. I haven't had quite all of my coffee this morning. There we go, 64. So we're good to go there. So now we're going to take the square root of 64. And remember, when I'm taking the square root of a number, what I'm asking is what number is multiplied by that number to get it. So I'm taking the square root. So if I'm looking at h squared, well, it's h times h. So h is the square root because h was multiplied by itself. And for this one, if I want to take the square root, if I didn't know my square roots off the top of my head, again, this might be a really good one to practice if you don't know it already. Because, um, you know, up to, you know, maybe about 14, 15, it's very convenient to just know these ones. But you can also just use your calculator here 
Um, if you have it highlighted already, it'll go in there. If you, if I didn't have that highlighted um, like this and I clicked it, it's just going to go in, you know, wherever. So I want to make sure that I have it highlighted so it goes in the correct area. Um, or click this and type in 64 and it'll tell me that the square root is 8. So 8 times 8 gives me 64. So 8 is multiplied by itself to get 64. That's not my answer. That is not what I want to type in here. That's my H. So now I'm going to go A equals, um, and I can take half of 6 or half of 8. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go half of 6 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. If I did half of 8, that would be 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So either way, I'm going to get the 24. Um, the last piece I do need to include is the unit. It says be sure to include your unit. We started with M, which is meters. When I'm dealing with length, that's just one dimension. So that's why we just see meters. When we're dealing with area, that's two dimensions. So we need to show that it's two dimension by squaring it like that. So it's meter squared because we're dealing more with like length times width. All right.